Hi Scorpio, welcome to your end of July 2021 general tarot update. It's Serena here. So Scorpio, there is going to be a full moon at one degree of uh, Aquarius and this is happening either on the 23rd or the 24th of um, July, depending on where you live. So as I record this, like one week from today and this is the first of two full moons in Aquarius so this is going to hit your home sector the fourth house let's see what develops let's see what things um, come to light what things come to a close or to fruition so maybe you close on a house or maybe your house is sold that might be the very thing that you have wanted to happen um, maybe something from your past is brought up to heal your childhood, in other words. So, yes. And, and by the way, there's a lot going on in that fourth house. Uh, Jupiter is going to, um, retrograde back in there in this time frame of the end of July and actually in the last week of July and um, Saturn is already there. So you already have that. And so then you're going to have these uh, two um, full moons. So that's going to trigger more revelations and all kinds of things. Oh, that's a great card. Okay. Let us see what is happening with this last half of the month oh my goodness we're almost in august boy you know i'm having some kind of like uh condensation with my camera but at, now that it's night it seems like it's a lot better maybe that's the secret is i should record at night this isn't the typical uh phone that i use for recording um because my other phone trying to get that one to to work my primary phone um Got a little wet. <laughs> so anyway, uh, the heart of the matter is the Knight of Wands. And this is a card of uh, someone. Now, th this is showing a woman. Of course, I call this my woke deck because it's, you know, it's expressing all this diversity with uh, using um, like uh, non-traditional imagery for um the different positions and that's fine by me but this is a masculine energy um this is double masculine and is actually connected with um sagittarius and uh in my estimation i i feel like this is an aries energy but it really doesn't matter because it's like a fire it might even be double fire but the point is is that um I really, what I love about this deck is that it, it's, um, it's, it's got such vibrant colors, but it has like variety of backgrounds. So you don't, it, it just doesn't blend in together. Like if you look at the spread, obviously you can't see the spread because of my, uh, my uh, particular situation, but all the cards are different and they do have sometimes similar backgrounds to to kind of conjure up a certain type of um energy that they represent like you know you can see the reds and the yellows it's kind of that empowerment that self-empowerment that um you know is is um what this card represents well actually you know the wands all the fire signs so anyway this can be um a male even though there's a female picture um it can be a male uh, who is, I would say, under 40 and is very dynamic, but not necessarily stable or wants a commitment. So if you're attracted, uh, Scorpios are a lot of times attracted to uh, Leo, but the other fire signs are Aries and Sag. You may find yourself attracted to this person's um, personality traits, but you may also feel like this person is um, kind of elusive, that it's hard to, to get this person to, you know, be pinned down. Uh, <laughs> I 
well, I mean, I was going to make a little racy joke there, but, um, um, you know, I guess when I'm, I'm joking about, uh, using different imagery with some of these cards, it's very true that if you're a woman watching this, and a lot of you will be, that you could be the Knight of Wands. So that's always true with the tarot, especially with these, um, uh, you know, general readings for so many people that, um, it can be a facet of yourself. But if it, if that's true, you may be kind of in this mode of thinking that you don't care, um, where the chips land. Like you have this very gutsy energy right now for whatever reason. Um, actually, well, we'll, we'll talk about the reason because this is the past position and we have the three of swords. See, this is starting to, um, get a little bit sharper, focus better. I'm getting better resolution at night, even with the condensation. Um, so the three of swords, this is kind of funny because this is so full of angst. This, this card, it's like this person screaming. The Three of Swords is a card of heartbreak. It can be a card of rejection, feeling rejected, feeling like no one loves you. Um, three of Swords in a reading, uh, when I'm not, you know, specifying, can be some kind of a third party situation. So here's the deal. You might feel as if either, I mean, let's put this one out here. If you're having an affair, and I, I always am afraid of saying that because I always get these people saying, I don't cheat on my partner, especially somebody like a Scorpio. I could totally see a Scorpio saying this, even though any sign is capable of cheating and cheating is not always done because somebody is devious. Sometimes people get involved in affairs because they're emotionally vulnerable, because they're lonely. That's a form of being emotionally vulnerable doesn't make it necessarily okay in terms of you know i don't like the idea of deceiving a partner and lying and saying you're going someplace that you're not going and all that stuff i'm not saying anything like that what i'm saying is that um it doesn't make somebody a bad person you know they may uh, have a weakness they may have uh, a certain they're going through some kind of abusive situation and this affair is a bridge to their independence so that they can have the courage to leave an abusive partner you, you know i don't judge people for that the only thing i don't like is when people uh try to justify it and act like it's no big deal when they don't have a sense of a conscience that's what i don't like but if somebody you know is involved in something and they feel bad about it but they're they're doing it because of a specific, a, a specific vulnerability or something like that, then I um, can understand it. But whatever, this isn't saying that you're doing that. Um, it can actually be that you're dealing with it on the other end, that your partner is cheating and you found out about it. And the Knight of Wands is like, you finally are done. And you're finally ready to just like, uh, maybe you've left that person and that's why it's in the past position and you're just like ready to 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 uh, do your own thing um the three of wands the th i'm sorry i say wands the three of swords can also be about cutting something cleanly you know a clean break so if you have been involved in a relationship that's on again off again you may have this ballsy feeling of like, I'm ready to just, um, uh, be independent, not be, um, connected to somebody that I really don't want to be connected to. And, and you're kind of, um, sowing your wild oats and I'm just using that term. It doesn't mean that you're sleeping around or anything, but that you're just enjoying your freedom. So it doesn't have to be something bad. It can be something, uh, and, and it really isn't the Knight of Wands, but it is, there can be a chaos associated with it because 
it's very fiery and if you think about fire fire doesn't necessarily it can't be contained sometimes you know it kind of spreads like and part of what fire represents is enthusiasm so it kind of builds upon itself it's like gasoline thrown on a fire the higher message is the ace of pentacles and this is a card of um you know new beginnings that have a practical connection so a new job this can be a financial windfall this is in the spiritual position so if we look at it in terms of relationships what it's saying is that um building a relationship from the foundation up fr with a very um stable kind of foundation is the way to have that sort of um life partner not just kind of a um what do you call it like a like a lover or somebody that is a uh, is a uh, a flash in the pan type of a thing. So if if you are attracted to the Knight of Wands, you may be attracted to people who are incapable of settling down. And you know, thinking about the Sun in Scorpio, you could easily have inner planets in Sagittarius, Venus, for instance, or Mars, and you could be attracted to partners that have that Sagittarian adventurous quality that you may really resonate with. But then when you're trying to um, have a permanent relationship, they're AWOL, they're gone. And it might be very frustrating to you, but when you think about it, you're choosing somebody who has those qualities and you're attracted to that. And um, it makes you feel rejected when they won't settle down. But, you know, you can't have expectations for someone when that is not part of their personality. Or maybe you're attracted to younger people um, and they're at a, in a different phase of life. So all of these things can, you know, create a situation where it's almost like it gives you an excuse not to, to be involved with someone. And believe it or not, some Scorpio people are like this, especially if you have a moon sign that's an air sign. Um, you may be very, very frustrated with yourself or uh, even as insightful as you are about human nature, you may say, why am I like this? Why do I blow hot and cold? And that is exhibit A on why people that are Scorpios have that side of themselves that, that are afraid of intimacy, even though they're attracted to it at the same time. What crosses you is the Six of Swords. Oh, I love the colors of this one. But, you know, here's a perfect example. Let's take the card that I just talked about. Look at how they're different backgrounds. I have some decks that I could show you that are so, um, you know, uniform in the background, and they just kind of blend into each other, and not this deck. This deck is called the Light Sears Tarot or something like that, if you're interested in, in the name. Um, so anyway, this card is about, you can see the person on the boat. It's really about leaving. The black, I now I'm, I'm seeing these black birds again. I think they indicate like conflict and, you know, problems and things like that. The Six of Swords, if I read it in the upright position, is a card of leaving... Uh, behind your troubles um, you know choosing peace in your life the number six is connected to the planet Venus and so it has that connotation of harmony um, the six of so swords can be disharmony swords can be conflict so the six of swords um, it, it, but swords is also like um, you know concepts ideas communication so this is about having the concept and therefore the value of valuing um, uh, peace and, and doing what it takes. This can be a card sometimes of even physical relocation. So 
when it's in the challenge position, how I would see this, Scorpio, is that you're attracted to conflict. Okay, now one of your rulers is Mars, and some of you, I don't know if all of you know that, uh, you may know that, you know, Pluto is your ruler. Uh, Pluto is really uh, the planet that I associate mostly with, um, most with uh, Scorpio. Um, Mars is the co-ruler though, and Mars is also the ruler of Aries. And there's that quality of Aries that I've seen over and over again of being very um, in love with conflict, you know, even kind of stirring up, stirring the pot, wanting the, that reaction from others. But th the reason for that is that Mars loves action, is about action, and is about, and, and Mars is the god of war. So there's a warrior quality in Aries. Well, I would say that Scorpio has this as well. When it is um, manifested in the constructive way, it's being brave. It's being somebody who's great in a crisis, who can think fast, who can act fast who has courage um when it is used by somebody who is not balanced it is somebody who who kind of like loves drama especially with uh scorpio i would say because you're a water sign and so all of that so i want you to think if if the th three of swords is something that you have been coping with uh if you have been feeling in some way Scorpio, the sense of rejection from someone. And this could even be in the workplace if you got passed over for a promotion or um, if you didn't get the job that you thought you were going to get. How does that, you know, what kind of story do you tell yourself about that? And how can you become more like the Knight of Wands where you don't care, where you... It, this is really about knowing yourself and, and believing in yourself to me, where you can, you can throw it off and you can, you can look at life as this, this adventure and you win some and you lose some type of thing. And I would say even that the Ace of Pentacles can mean that there's a new job on the horizon. So for you not to worry too much about it and think that it's never going to get here. What's coming in? Three of Wands, a card of expansion. Um, wanting more out of life. And that can go, you know, and even if somebody else has been the one to pull the plug on a relationship, looking at that and saying that's the best thing that ever happened to me because I really was not... I was really playing small in my life. All of the fixed signs, like Scorpio, can, can favor that kind of constancy or guarantee of like, um, you know, something, the, 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 the um, getting in a rut too much instead of being more adventurous. So I'm seeing these two key cards with the Knight of Wands and the Three of Wands of that, you know, maybe something is shaking you out of that rut. And believe me, Scorpio, this, you ain't seen nothing yet because you're going to have um, eclipses in your sign in 2022, but Taurus starting later this year. So <laughs> you're going to start to, and that's a lunar eclipse. So that means that the sun is opposing it so you are involved in that and you are going to to feel that sense of uh change coming into your life whether you like it or not but if you embrace change and you and you actually initiate change you're going to feel more in control of your life the outcome is the eight of pentacles this is a card of uh you can kind of see i don't know She's holding a green candle. Green is number of prosperity, and that's kind of the number of the background. Uh, pentacles, that's um, money and um, finances. This is like 
being empowered with your finances, having good money, earning good money, um, doing your best work. Uh, sometimes this can be training, getting, getting training or, um, doing an apprenticeship so that you can be a master at your craft. So this is actually, I think that you're, um, taking chances right now and that is going to lead to, um, the best possible outcome. So that could be what is going on too, that taking chances gives you your ideal job, ace of pentacles and, uh, that, that sort of thing. If this is relationship related, um, maybe you are focusing more on your success in the world and allowing those who do not value you to fall away. Okay, Scorpio, I'm glad to give you this message. I hope that this resonated. If you would like a private reading, I am primarily an astrologer. I do tarot as well. Um, so please check me out at the link below if you're interested. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.